Recently, I posted a video about six possible new weapons that could be added to the Apocalypse DLC for Battlefield 1. If you missed that video, link's in the description. Continuing with the Apocalypse theme, however, today I'd like to discuss a potential location that DICE could add in this DLC. Shemisil Fortress. The Apocalypse DLC is due to drop in early 2018 and is the last of the four advertised DLCs for Battlefield 1. DICE has set expectations for maps to take place on bitterly contested ground with brutal tools and unique weapons. I think the Fortress of Shemisil could fit right into that description. Now, before I get into some specifics, I think it's worth me giving some background about what the Fortress of Shemisil actually is. When people hear the word fortress, I think they might jump to a huge castle, maybe huge fortifications, but that's not really the right image to have in your head when thinking about Shemisil. You need to think on an even larger scale. Now, the city of Chemisil lies in southeastern Poland, but when war broke out in 1914, the land was occupied by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, who had recently been fortifying it. The outbreak of the war had loomed for some time. The town as it was then had been fortified many times since the 1800s, and over 40 separate forts had been built around the town. A circle, roughly 45 kilometers in circumference, surrounded the town, and within that lay all of the forts. So the fortress of Chemisil was really a huge collection of smaller forts, all linked together with trench networks, barracks, and artillery emplacements. Now, some records place it as the third largest fortress built in the pre-war period, and it was designed to accommodate around 85,000 soldiers. Although at some points, more than 120,000 soldiers were stationed there. During the war, the fortress saw quite a bit of action over an extended period in late 1914 and early 1915. When the war first broke out, the town itself was fairly undermanned, and considering how under threat the town could be from the Russian Empire, who had of course sided against the Central Powers and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, moves were quickly made to man the many forts that had been constructed. By September 1914, the Austro-Hungarian army had moved in and completely occupied the town. Just a couple of days after those soldiers were in position, the Russians attacked for the first time. They had little success further north on the Eastern Front against the German Empire, but against the Austro-Hungarians, they had a hell of a lot more success. During the Battle of Galicia, the Russians forced the Central Powers back over 160 kilometers, and the fortress of Chemisil was the only location to hold out against that advance. Now, unfortunately, as the front line had fallen everywhere else, the Russians completely surrounded the fortress, as it was now in their territory, and the 120,000 or so Austro-Hungarian soldiers trapped inside the fortress would have to fight to keep the Russians out. This was the first of the shows of resistance that the fortress really had to make. In late September 1914, the Russians attacked with a full-scale assault on the fortress. But for three days, they accomplished nothing other than losing 40,000 of their own men. They didn't wait for artillery support and instead relied on infantry to make the pushes forwards, and they failed miserably. The garrison inside the fortress repelled the Russian advance, and an Austro-Hungarian relief force managed to break its way through the Russian encirclement to provide help. On October the 11th, a couple of weeks later, the Russians withdrew their attack and fell back across the San River. As the Russians fell back, this allowed trapped civilians to leave the town, but they weren't simply allowed to leave, they were instructed to leave. A lack of food had been a huge problem since the fortress was encircled and the civilians were taking up vital supplies that the soldiers needed. But that wasn't the only time the fortress came under attack. In fact, I would say it's the far less impressive of the two sieges that the fortress had to endure. 
Now, further north, on October the 31st, the Germans were defeated at the Battle of Vistula River, and they withdrew from their attack on the city of Warsaw. This caused the Austro-Hungarians further south to also withdraw from their positions, this time at the San River, and that left the Russians a clear path to attack the Chemisil Fortress again. This time, however, the Russians did not launch a frontal assault on the fortress. Instead, they learnt from their mistake and decided to relentlessly bombard the fortress with absolutely everything they had to force the troops inside to surrender. Throughout November, December, January and February, the fortress held against the attacks of the Russians, with the troops inside running lower and lower on supplies of food and water, and disease was spreading. By the end of February 1915, all relief efforts sent by the Austro-Hungarian Empire had been stopped, and the Russians began to overrun the fortress in early March. The remaining soldiers held a line within the fortress ring until such a time that all supplies useful to the Russians had been destroyed, and then the order was given for soldiers to try and break out. The fortress fell under Russian control on the 22nd of March 1915, when finally all the Austro-Hungarian forces surrendered. So just how would a location like this, the Chemisil Fortress, how would that fit into Battlefield 1? Well, firstly, I think it fits the description of the DLC almost perfectly. It's a section of land so bitterly contested that it took the Russians over six months of near continuous assault upon it to capture it, despite them having encircled it completely and it being in their territory. I think a map that reflected the final days of the battle within the fortress as the Russians took over would be a really good setting for the Apocalypse DLC. Maybe even utilising the Conquest Assault game mode that we've seen recently in the Turning Tides DLC. Most of the flags would be housed right within the centre of the network of forts within the town itself, with a couple of flags laying just outside that. The Austro-Hungarians would hold all of these flags at the start of a match, and it would be the Russians attacking the fortress that needed to try and capture all of the flags to stop the Austro-Hungarians from spawning back in to defend their territory. If the Russians capture all the flags, the Austro-Hungarians would be defeated. I think the fortress would also offer a slightly denser location for fighting, rather than the open landscapes that we've been used to in Battlefield 1, particularly in the Russian DLC, which does take place on the Eastern Front. It wouldn't be quite what I'd call an urban map, but it would certainly offer some more urban-like combat, especially if it were to be set right in the centre of the fortress in the town. Now, Amiens is by far and away my favourite Battlefield 1 map, and having more gameplay like that map would be awesome. However, there were no tanks that took part in either of the attacks on the fortress of Chemisil, as all combat took place before tanks were even thought of, so potentially we're looking at a map here where infantry combat would play a larger role. Plenty of stationary weapons like field guns and machine guns could be set up to defend the fortress, but if we were to stick to the time period that the battle took place in, vehicle combat would be extremely limited. Perhaps planes could play a role, especially fighter planes, against all of that infantry on the ground. I think this fortress could make for a great map in the Apocalypse DLC and potentially introduce some more of the Carpathian Mountain setting that we got in the Russian DLC. Of course, this isn't the only location that's going to be featured, and it might not even be featured, and I'd love to know some of your thoughts down below in the comments section, maybe even suggesting some of your own settings that could be included. If any are detailed enough, then I might end up featuring them in another video in the next couple of weeks. It'd be great to get some more ideas rolling as we approach the Apocalypse DLC. But thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I really like making these videos because I can learn a little bit more about World War I history and then featuring on the channel so that you guys might actually learn something about the battles that took place. And some of those are ended up being represented here in Battlefield 1. But as I say, make sure you leave some comments down below, and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.